OK, in the second half of the semester, we're going to be doing. Research essays. First, I'm going to introduce what is a research essay, and then I will talk to you about the hardest part of this unit. Uh, if you're coming in late uh, during the break, please come see me to uh, get back your midterm exams. So a research essay is basically an exposition essay. Except uh, when you're writing an exposition essay, you're giving information that you know or that you have found. For a research essay, you can only use information that you have found. Every fact that you give must come from somewhere else. And this is because of the nature of research. Think about it this way. If somebody tells you something that seems. Uh, interesting, fascinating, maybe even too strange to be true. How do you check? whether it is true or not. Maybe you'll go talk to your friends, but how do your friends know? Maybe you'll talk to your teacher, but maybe your teacher is also bullshitting you. Maybe you go online, but how do you trust the websites? Well, the most trustworthy website is probably Wikipedia. And Wikipedia at the very bottom will always give you some sources. But how do you trust those sources? Sometimes those sources will be research papers. And what a research paper is, is that a researcher has usually looked through the literature or designed some kind of experiment to try to answer some questions. And the results of their research are written into a paper, and in order for that paper to be published, it has to be reviewed by other researchers to make sure that the research was done in the right way, to make sure that the results are dependable. So the nature of research is based on experimentation, and confirmation. It's not just what makes sense, but what makes sense to everybody and uh, what can be determined using a specifically designed method. In other words, it's not what you think, it's what everyone agrees is probably the right answer. So for an actual research paper, there are two parts. The first part is what have other people found so far? And the second part is what have you found in your original research? In this class, we're not doing a research paper. We're doing a research essay. So you don't have to do original research. You only have to find out what other people have discovered so far. So if you write something in your research essay that is not based on what somebody else has found, that is either your own opinion or your own original research, and that is not what we're looking for. This unit will help prepare you next semester for the uh, research methods class, Yenjo uh, Fangfa. And the key point of this unit is finding those other sources of information and using the correct way to record those sources. I'm sure you have previously written reports or given presentations that used other sources. Have you ever thought about what is the correct way to record those sources? It's not just giving the website. It's not just giving the author and the title. Different research disciplines, have different ways of recording your sources. And for each discipline, the format has to be consistent so that even if you don't know the person, even if you don't know the topic, 
you can still understand what the sources are. And so you can look for those sources to check whether the author is using them in a way that makes sense. Whether you can trust this author. Now in our department, uh, we are not an English department. We are an applied English department. So our citation method is called APA 7th. This format is the American Psychological Association format in the seventh edition. Uh, this is used for many kinds of social science. Uh, and our department is technically uh, an education oriented department and education is a social science. So in this unit, I will be teaching you how to record sources correctly using this format APA 7th. Um, I earlier directed you to look at page 13 of the handout. These are examples from the American Psychological Association about how to record different kinds of sources. So it's not organized according to topic. It is organized according to the kind of source. Journal articles, books, book chapters, websites, YouTube videos, conference presentations, different kinds of sources. Some of those source types are academic. They have gone through that process of doing research and asking other researchers to confirm the results. Other types of sources are more popular, like YouTube videos or just like newspaper articles. For this unit, your research essay must include at least three, let's say four different sources, four different kinds of sources. If you give me four newspaper articles, that is one kind of source. You must have at least four different kinds. And among those four, at least two must be academic. I'll talk about the definition of academic later uh, today, but th these are the assignment requirements. I don't care what topic you write about, and I will only very superficially look at the actual essay content. The focus of this unit is on how you record your sources, how you cite your sources. Citation, Ren Ying. Uh, and so we're not going to be using the rubric on your the second page of your handout. I'm not going to be looking at your research essay in the same way that I look at your argument essay. I'm mostly going to be looking at how you record your sources. OK, for this presentation, sometimes I will change to full screen and so you won't be able to see the subtitles. Um, if you're watching at home, you can turn on the YouTube's automatic English subtitles during those sections. So this presentation will teach you how to use APA 7th to record your sources. Now, the thing about any citation style, including APA 7th, is that the devils are in the details. So it's not just what you write, but how do you write it? Uppercase or lowercase letters? Straight or italics? Xieti. Do you use a space? Do you use a colon? Ma ha. Do you use parentheses? Gua ha. Where do you put the period? Zhutian. The devil is in the details. This is going to be the hardest thing you have ever learned so far. Please pay attention. So first, let's check how good you are. Oh, sorry. First, let's talk about what are academic sources. A peer reviewed journal, a research journal. Is academic because these research papers have been through the confirmation process. The confirmation process is called peer review. It has been reviewed by peer researchers. Peer reviewed books from academic publishers are also academic. Sometimes these books are collections of essays. Each chapter is by a different person. This is called an edited collection. 
if the entire collection, if the entire book is peer reviewed, then it is also academic. Conference proceedings, research conferences, papers presented at conferences are also academic. They are not as strictly uh, enforced. The standards for conference proceedings are slightly lower, but they are still academic. Um, because for research journal articles and books, um, they have to pass peer review before they're published. But for conference papers, only the abstract has to pass peer review. The full paper does not. Um, but they are still considered academic. PhD dissertations, Bosulun, are very academic. And in fact, if you can find a PhD dissertation about your topic, you will be very, very lucky because a dissertation is where the PhD student shows the their teachers and shows the world that they know everything important about their topic. So if you find a dissertation about your topic, it will probably cover everything you want. Um, and it, you can also look through the sources in the dissertation to find more sources for yourself. Master's theses are obviously not as good as PhD dissertations, but they are still considered academic for you because you are undergrads. But bachelor's theses or senior theses are not academic. You are supposed to be writing one of these before you graduate. They are on the same level. You have to find sources that are higher than your level. So if you find a source that says senior thesis or bachelor's thesis or honors thesis, those are not academic. Finally, government and institutional publications, a government report, a report by an NGO, these are not academic. Nobody has to check whether the information is correct. This one is very tricky. Lots of students will say, oh, but it's a government publication. That is not academic. It is for the purposes of the government, not for the purposes of science. So uh, this PowerPoint is very long. There are 65 slides. So I did not give you the paper version, but it is on Moodle if you ever need to check. This is the page for a, an academic journal. The journal is called Educational and Psychological Measurement. If you need to check whether the journal is academic, you can look for this item on their menu, Journal Info. And it will have things like the description, aims and scopes, editorial board, submission guidelines. If it has these things, it is probably academic. Um, and so the name of the journal is here. This is an example of APA citation style. This example is a journal article from this journal. So very quickly, these are the key elements that you have to pay attention to. Uh, this paper has two authors. The first author's surname, Xing Si, is Lovell. Uh, this author then has a first name that begins with G and a middle name that begins with D. Before the last author, you have the ampersand, which is the and sign. The second author's surname is Honor. First name begins with C, middle name begins with F. This paper was published in 1955. The title of the paper is Forced Choice Applied to College Faculty Rating. The name of the journal in which it is published is Educational and Psychological Measurement. It is published in Volume 15, Di Su Jin, Number 3, uh, or Issue Number 3, Di San Qi. And the page range of this paper within the journal 
it begins on page 291 and ends on page 304. Finally, this is the web address where you can find the journal online. So that's the content, but look at how you write it. Surname, comma, first name initial, period, space, second uh, middle name initial, period, comma, space, and sign, surname, comma, space, first name initial, period, space, second name initial, period, space, open parentheses, year, close parentheses, period, space, title in sentence case, only the first word and proper nouns are in uppercase. The rest is in lowercase, just like a regular English sentence. In Roman, zhiti, period. Then the name of the journal in title case. So the first word and then all nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs are capitalized, da xie. Everything else is in lowercase, so the word and is not capitalized. In italics, xie ti, comma. The comma is also in italics, dou dian ye xie ti. Space, volume number, in italics. And then we're back to Roman. Dou qi hao de shi hou, qi shu de shi hou, hui dao zi ti. For the issue number, Parentheses, issue number, parentheses, comma, space, first page, end dash, fan wei hao, last page, period, space, and then the website. Now, I only want you to include the website if it says DOI. DOI means Digital Object Identifier. It is a unique website for every different research paper. If your source does not have a DOI, don't include the website. Uh, so we're going to spend 60 pages talking about this format. But before that, oh, sorry. So that was um, academic journal papers. What about academic books? These are the most common academic publishers. If your book is published by one of these companies, it is more likely than not, it is an academic book. I'm sorry, it is an academic book. So any kind of university publisher. Uh, in Taiwan, university publishing is actually not very popular, but if you do find a book by like NTU Press, Tai Da Chuban, so that's academic. In the West, academic publisher names usually say University of Something Press or blah blah University Press. Then you have for profit academic publishers, Ingli Gongsi de Chu Ban Siyi, Bloomsbury Academic, Palgrave Macmillan, Rutledge, uh, sorry, Rutledge, Springer, Verso uh, are common for our field. The last one is very tricky. Peter Lang has two uh, kinds of books. The first kind is self published. Those are not academic. But if the book appears in a book series, those are peer reviewed and those are academic. If you find a book by another publisher and you're not sure, you can always ask me. Where can you find academic sources? The fastest way is Google Scholar scholar.google.com. Every result will be related to some kind of academic source. Not every source is good, but it will give you sources that are more academic than a regular Google search. You can also look at a relevant Wikipedia page and go to the very bottom and look at the references. Again, not every reference will be academic, but many of them will be. You can also look at the references of academic papers and books. If a book or paper is academic, they probably will also use lots of academic sources. So 
You can find a paper, go to the very bottom and look at the sources. You can find a book, go to the last part of the book and look at those sources. Again, not every source in these places is academic, but you will find more here than a random Google search. If you have any doubts, you are always welcome to talk to me about your sources. This is what Google Scholar looks like. These are your main results. If it says PDF in the front, the link will take you to a web page where you can find the PDF. On the right, if you have this kind of link PDF, if you click here, it will download the PDF for you. Sometimes there's no link on the right and you have to find a different way of uh, getting that PDF. Sometimes the result will be a Word document, docx or a doc. Sometimes uh, you'll have to dig a little more. This is what, uh, and then if you're, uh, if you want to limit the time frame, you can change uh, how old the results are or from what year to what year. Uh, this is a very convenient source. This is what the bottom of a Wikipedia page looks like. The references are directly tied to parts of the article. Some of these are academic, some of these are not. For example, um, this is an academic source. It's from this university. It's not in English, but it's academic. But then you also have non-academic sources, right? A lecture. A lecture is not technically academic. Something from a website, not academic. But sometimes you will have a, another section called sources and further reading. A lot of these will be academic. Every single one of these is an academic source. And you can tell. Author, title, publisher, volume, number, uh, publisher of the entire journal, or I guess the journal title, and then page range. So these are academic sources. So the principle of APA 7th is that in the middle of your text, in the body of your text, you give a quick reference to the author name and the year of your source. So an in-text citation in the middle of your essay, it will say something like Lovell and Honor 1955 made a very good point. This combination name and year lets your reader know how to find the entire listing, the entire item in the references section at the end, right? References at the end. So Lovell and Honor 1955, we go looking for those names, Lovell and Honor 1955, and the reader will know that you're talking about this paper. Uh, for your research essay, I will be looking at both parts. Do you cite it correctly in your essay? And do you list it correctly at the end of your essay? So before we talk about the specific details, I want to check your powers of observation. This is the correct version of this sentence. I'm now going to show you a series of incorrect versions and see if you can find out why they are incorrect. Why is this wrong? Does anyone see the mistake? You have to be able to see the mistake in order to avoid the mistake. So what's wrong with this sentence? Yes, before she said you need a comma. Yeah, it was missing this comma. Next, what's wrong with this sentence?
Anyone? Here. There was an extra space before the last period. You're going to say that this is I'm being too picky, but when you write your actual citations, people make these kinds of mistakes. Your format has to be perfect or it's wrong. What's wrong with this one? OK, this one's a little bit harder. Let me point it out. This is wrong. Why is this wrong? No. Nope. It's wrong because this is not a double quotation mark. This is two single quotation marks. One more time. This is two single quotation marks. This is one double quotation mark. I only do this because some of you actually do use two single quotation marks and it's not right. What's wrong with this one? Actually, you should know. Here. Why is this wrong? It should be curved. It should not be straight. It should be curved. And this makes a difference because the straight one is not actually an apostrophe. It's a symbol for inches and feet. It's a symbol for angles. It has to be curved. What's wrong with this one? Here. The sentence is not over. It should not be a period. What's wrong with this one? Hmm? Yes, good. Look at this. Does that look weird to you? Too many spaces. Again, this is important. In your citation format, you should only use one space every time you need a space. What's wrong with this one? Good, there's an extra space between the comma and the quotation mark. Careful about that. Oh, OK, yeah, that's the last one. So um, if you had some trouble noticing those mistakes, you can go back to this PowerPoint and practice at home. So first, let's start with in-text citations. This is how you mention your source in the middle of your essay. There are two ways to do this. Uh, and each way has two different methods of citation. If you are using your own words to summarize this person's information, this is called a paraphrase. Para means around, phrase is, you know, a phrase. So a paraphrase is to talk around the phrase. You're using your own words to discuss what they say. In this case, you do not need quotation marks and you do not need a page number. There are two ways to cite a source in this case. You can use the author names as the subject of your sentence. So these two people and their study, this is the subject. Mentioned 
is the verb. That blah, blah, blah is the object. Or you can write a normal sentence and include the author and year at the end. So in the second example, language students is the subject. Learn is the verb. And then the rest of the sentence and at the end of the sentence you have a parenthesis name and name comma year. Now notice the first one when you're using names as the subject, you write out the word and. In the second one where the citation tag includes the names as uh, within the parentheses, you use the ampersand, the and sign. And there is a comma between uh, there's a space between this comma and the year. So this one is name ampersand name comma space year all inside the parentheses. Now the second kind is quotation. If you use their words exactly. Then you have to add quotation marks surrounding the part that you use exactly. When I say exactly, I don't just mean that the meaning is exactly the same. I mean the language is exactly the same. You copied and pasted it. In this case, uh, if you use the authors and study as the subject, this is the same. But at the end, you have to add the specific page where you found this quotation. Page or pages if it crosses more than one page. Uh, look at how you write this. In this one, the sentence ends, period. But in this one, the sentence has not yet ended. No period. After the quotation mark, space, parentheses, P if it's one page, PP if it's more than one page, period for abbreviation, space, page number or numbers, parentheses, and then the sentence ends, period. Now, sometimes you need to change the quotation uh, for some reason. Maybe it's too long and has too much extra information. Maybe you need to make the quotation fit the grammar of your sentence. If you need to change the quotation in any way, you have to let the reader know that the quotation has been changed. If you need to add something, use square brackets. In Chinese, we usually use just parentheses, but in English, use square brackets. This is because in English, the only use for square brackets is to add something to a quotation. If you use regular parentheses, we don't know if the person said that or if you are adding it. But if you use square brackets, we know that it is you adding something. So the original sentence said raising proficiency. But you thought you have to add the. So you use square brackets to tell the reader you have added this. If you need to take something out. Use ellipses, Sanjiho. An ellipsis is space, period, space, period, space, period, space. There are spaces between the periods. So in the original sentence, it said proficiency and efficiency. But you think efficiency is extra. You want to take it out. So you change it to proficiency dot dot dot. Uh, and then the rest of the quotation is the same. If your ellipsis includes the end of one sentence and the beginning of another. So if the part you are taking out crosses sentences, then you need to put an extra dot at the beginning or at the end of the first part. So if the sentence, if the original sentence ends at the word proficiency, then it would be four dots. Dot, space, dot, space, dot, space, dot, space. Uh, but this is in the middle of the sentence, so there are only three dots. 
Do you have questions so far? It's not hard to understand. It's just really hard to remember. OK, let's take a short break uh, and then we'll talk about block quotations.
So we just looked at short quotations. How do you tell your reader that this sentence or this information is from somewhere else? But what if your quotation is longer? If your quotation is 40 words or longer, you have to use a block quotation or a long quotation. This looks like this. According to these authors in this study, comma, or you can use another kind of introduction, and then the part in the middle that is indented, suopai, this entire paragraph is one quotation. The tricky part of a block quotation is here. This is the only case where you will put the page number after the end of the sentence. Right, look at the previous slide here. The page number comes before the end of the sentence. But in a block quotation, the page number comes after the end of the sentence. So quotation, period, space, page number. Um, and then the sentence here is just to show you that the entire quotation is indented as a block. That's why it's called a block quotation. The level of indentation is the same as for the beginning of a paragraph. Uh, and then this quotation is, taking, is taken from this source. This is an academic book. So we can look at how an academic book should be cited. Surname, comma, first name, initial, space, second name, initial, period, uh, comma, space, ampersand, space, uh, author, surname, comma, space, first name, period, space, parenthesis, year, parenthesis, period, space. Title of the book is in sentence case, 一般句子大小写, but italicized, 写体. So first word and proper nouns are in uppercase. Everything else is in lowercase. When I say the first word, I also include the first word of the subtitle. And it's in italics. And then period, and then give the name of the publisher, period. Uh, Penguin is the publisher. Now, all of the examples so far have had two authors. What if you have three or more authors? In this case, uh, the list in the references section is the same. You just list out all of the authors like usual. But in the text, in your essay, don't give three names. Give one surname and then the phrase et al. Et al is Latin, et alia, which means and everybody else or and others. Um, so et is the full word, but all is an abbreviation, has a source. So you need to add this period, has a source. So if in your essay you say Lochner et al year, I know that this is a study and the researchers are more than three people, three or more people, and the first person's surname, Xing Shi, is Lochner. So then I can go to the list of references. I find Lochner. I check, yes, it is more than three people. Yes, it is from 2020. This is the source that you are using. So again, there are two ways to write this in the middle of your essay. You can use the author and study as your subject, right? The subject is Lochner et al. 2020. The verb is offers. Or you can put it at the end in a citation tag, yong biao chen, blah, 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 parentheses, Lochner et al. year. Notice this. You need both. This is the only time in the English language you will put a period and then a comma. The only time in the entire English language. The period 
is for shortening the all. The comma is already there between the name and the year. Look. This comma. It's this comma. You're just adding the period after the end of all. Now let's look at the reference citation. More than three or uh, three or more authors. So you only include the and sign before the last author. First author is Lochner A. Then you have Backfish I. Then you have Hugerheide V. Then you have Van Gogh T. And the ampersand sign, Renko A. Everything else is the same as we were discussing before. Uh, notice the title is Timing Matters, and then after the exclamation point is the subtitle, Fu Biao, Explaining Between Study Phases Enhances Students' Learning. Journal title, comma, volume 112, issue 4, pages 841 to 853, website. So we've been talking about all of these punctuation symbols. Some of you may not know where they are on the keyboard. So here are the important keys you need to know. If you need to indent, please do not use the space bar. Please hit tab once. and tab jin, You only need to press it once and it will indent the whole thing. Uh, if your cursor is on the first line, it will only indent the first line. If your cursor is on the second or third or any other line of the paragraph, it will indent the whole paragraph. This will be useful if you have a block quotation. Uh, so I, I have seen some students. They need to indent the block quotation, but they don't know how to do all of it. So they indent the first line, hit enter, indent the second line, hit enter. Don't do that. Just move your cursor to another line, hit tab, and the whole paragraph will move to the right. This key, it's called print screen or system request. Have you guys ever used this key before? This key can help you take screenshots, in case you need it. Um, I think on the latest version of Windows, it will not um, directly take a screenshot. It will ask you, do you want the whole screen or do you want part of the screen? And after you confirm the size of your screenshot, it will save it to the clipboard. It will not save it as a file. Uh, like you can use like paint. These are the uh, square brackets and the mathematical large brackets. We don't need the large brackets. So just uh, use these two keys for the square brackets. This is the apostrophe and quotation mark key. If you need a single quotation mark or a single apostrophe, just hit the key. If you need a double quotation mark, press shift and then hit the key. And then finally, two more. Uh, let's, let's talk about this one first. Um, this key you can use to uh, create n dashes. I'll talk about this later. Um, but I think also not on the latest version of Windows. I created this PowerPoint two years ago and then Windows fucked it up. So uh, I guess if you don't use the key, it doesn't matter. Um, but if you have a slightly older version of Windows, um, press, I think it was um, control, control plus this key, it's the minus sign, Jin Hao. And it will give you an n dash. Um, but for all other kinds of dashes and hyphens, you want this key. This one. Uh, if you need an underscore, uh, hit shift and then hit this key. 
So that brings us to um, the difference between italics and quotation marks. Some so shady, some so in Italics in English are used, first of all, for emphasis. Taylor Swift's music is very good. In Chinese, we don't use italics this way. In Chinese, we either use quotation marks, or we use bold, but in English, emphasis is italics. The second use is for the title of a complete work. In the earlier citations, we said the title of the article or the title of the paper is Roman, but the title of the journal is italics. And this is because the journal is a complete thing. But each paper inside the journal is a separate part of this complete thing. So in English, we use italics for the complete thing. The same for books. Uh, a book is a complete thing, so the title is italicized. But if you're talking about a chapter inside the book, it is only part of the complete thing. So you would use quotation marks, as I say here, title of part of a complete work. Uh, this example is the entire album, the entire Taylor Swift album is called Midnights. It's a complete album, italics. But Lavender Haze is only one song on this complete album. So the title of the song is in quotation marks. Uh, finally, if you need italics inside italics. So let's say you're reading a book and the book is called a study of uh, like Hamlet, Hamlet to the angel. Then the title of the book is a study of Hamlet. But Hamlet itself is a complete book. So it's a complete title inside a complete title. In that case, uh, the title inside the title is reversed back into Roman. So italics within italics is just Roman. Like uh, the quotation marks. If you need a quotation inside a quotation, the then the outside, the, the bigger quotation is a double quotation mark, but the quotation inside the quotation is a single quotation mark. But if you have two layers, Sorry, if you have three layers, if you have a quotation within a quotation within a quotation, then the outermost layer is double, the middle layer is single, and then the inside layer is double again. Shuang dan shuang. Same thing, italics. The largest level is italicized, the middle level is Roman, and then the inside level is italicized again. Xie ti zi ti xie ti. So those are italics. For quotation marks, uh, the first use obviously is quotations. If you use somebody else's language exactly, put them inside quotation marks. The second use we just talked about is the title of part of a complete work. Uh, we also talked about this. Quotation within a quotation is a single quotation mark. Uh, and then there's one more use. These are called scare quotes. You're using somebody else's language, but you're only using a specific word or a specific phrase. And so you put this word in quotation marks to tell your reader that this person is using it in a very special way. This is not the usual meaning. Um, or another way to say this is you are now going to discuss the usage of this word. You're not talking about the meaning, you're talking about how people use it. Uh, okay, next we have hyphens and dashes. In Chinese, hyphen, lian jie hao. And then we have two different kinds of dashes. Uh, let's talk about them in order. So the first one, hyphen. When uh, in some words in English are, have two parts or more, and you need to they are actually one word. So like uh, eagle-eyed, ying-yan-de, pre-war, zan-qian-de, or uh, the most common one is like 
10 year old boy. The 10 year old is one word. So these words you need to connect with a hyphen. So you just type the hyphen key or type the minus key Jin Hao. And that's the symbol. The second kind is called the end dash. This is to show a range fan wei hao from this page to that page. Uh, the other meaning is the same as the hyphen, but one of the words that you are combining is actually more than one word. So look at this. Pre-war. Uh, on both sides of the hyphen is each one word. But look at this. Pre-civil war. Neizan. Civil war is one word that looks like two words. Civil war is one word that looks like two words. And this is very easy to check. Civil means polite. War, you know what a war is. But a civil war is not a polite war. So you know that civil war is actually one word, not two words. We, ha we also have the same thing in Chinese. Same thing here. Civil war looks like two words, it's just one word. So if you need a hyphen for this kind of word, you don't use a hyphen, you use an end dash. It's like a bigger hyphen. How do you type this in Microsoft Word? If you have a slightly older version, you just hit control plus minus. But if that doesn't work, then you have to do this. Any random letter, space, hyphen, space, any random letter, space. And after you hit the last space, the hyphen in the middle will be will become a little bit bigger. It will grow into an end dash. Um, how do you type this in Google Docs? Just type two hyphens. It's so easy. Why doesn't Microsoft Word just do that? Uh, okay, so anyway, and then the third one is called an M dash in Chinese. Um, so why is it called an N dash? Why is this called an M dash? Because this dash is the same length as the letter N. This dash is the same length as the letter M. So you know that the M dash is longer than the N dash, and the N dash is longer than the hyphen. So M dashes, how do you use M dashes in English? To interrupt the sentence. No matter the grammar of the original sentence, after you add an M dash, the grammar starts over. The left side of the M dash and the right side of the M dash have no grammatical connection. Um, so this is very useful, for example, when you are trying to record a Donald Trump speech. Because, you know, his speeches go all over the place. He doesn't care about grammar. So instead of trying to figure out which words belong in which sentence, you could just keep using M dashes every time he changes direction. Another use of the M dash is as a strong parenthetical. Uh, so if you use two M dashes, the part in the middle is extra information. It's just like a parenthesis. But if you use an M da two M dashes instead of a parenthesis, it tells the reader that uh, this is extra information, but it is important extra information. The M dash is stronger than a parenthesis. 
OK, so how do you type this in Microsoft Word? Letter, any random letter, hyphen, hyphen, any random letter, space. And once you hit that space, the two hyphens will come together to create an M dash. How do you type this in Google Docs? Again, the simplest solution, hyphen, 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 and it will connect into one M dash. Why doesn't Microsoft Word just do this? So easy. Now, when we're talking about the M dash, you have to pay attention. There is one situation where it is used differently in Chinese than in English. Look at this sentence. This makes sense in Chinese, right? On the left of the M dash and on the right of the M dash, these two nouns are the same thing. But in English, for this kind of sentence, we don't use the M dash. We use commas. Two commas. Between these two commas, this information is extra information, just like the parenthesis. Uh, this is called an a positive comma. So the first comma, my friend is John. John is my friend. The first comma is a positive. Um, so in fact, if you want to add extra information in your sentences, you have three choices. The weakest, uh, kind of least important information, you can use parentheses. If you have really important extra information, you can use two M dashes. But if it's somewhere in the middle, it's not that important, but it is still kind of important, you can use two commas. OK, I have finished talking about every element in a citation, right? We talked about the uh, capitalization. We talked about italics. We talked about uh, the end dash. So um, I want you to notice where you can find each part of this citation. This page is the page for this paper. If you click on this link, it will bring you to this page. So you get to this page and you need to create a citation. Where, where can you find all of this information? So we begin with the authors. Here. These two are the authors. George D. Lovell and Charles F. Hunter. But we only need their last names and the initials of their other names. So we turn George D. Lovell into Lovell, comma, space, G, period, space, D, period. Same thing for the second author. Charles F. Honor becomes Honor, comma, space, C, period, space, F, period. And then before the last author, we add the and sign, the ampersand. Next, where is the year? Here, issue published October 1, 1955. So the year is 1955. Do not use this year. First published is not what you want. You want the year of the issue. In this case, the two dates are the same, but some journals will first publish individual papers and then once they have enough papers, they will put them together into an issue. So the date of the paper's first publication will sometimes be different from the date of the issue. You want the date of the issue. 引用的日期要用那一期的年份, Unless it is one of those really early papers that have not yet been collected. 
，如果尚未归入某一期，你再去引用单篇的期的年份。Next, where is the title of this paper? Here, this is the title. Do you notice anything strange about this title? It, can we simply copy and paste? No, right? Look, forced choice applied to college faculty rating. Most of these words begin with a capital letter, but we only want the first word to begin with a capital letter. So when you copy and paste, then you have to change the first letters into lowercase. Unless there is a proper noun. Next, where is the journal title? Here, this is the journal title. Educational and Psychological Measurement. Can you copy and paste the journal title? Yes, and then you have to turn it into italics. Next, where is the volume number and issue number? Here, volume 15, issue 3. So this becomes 15 xieti, and then 3 in parentheses. Some journals will not have a volume or will not have an issue. They will only have one. If you only have one number, treat it as the volume number. So if there's only one number, uh, ignore the parentheses. 如果这这个期刊只有一个数字的话，地理卷地理期只有一个的话，你把它当做卷斜体处理，然后挂号里面的就不要就不用提供那个挂号。Finally, the page range, 页码范围，where can you find the page range? Here, pages two nine one to three o four. Can you copy and paste? No, this, I don't know if you can see this. That is a hyphen, You want an N dash, So, okay, you can copy and paste, but then you have to change the hyphen into an N dash. Um, okay, next, did you notice this? Here, did you notice that there's a lot of space? So we were talking about the first sentence in a paragraph and uh, block quotations have to be indented, right? But in the list of references, you do the opposite. This is called hanging indentation. The first line stays the same, but every other line is indented. How do you do this? Uh, so we're talking about the font, 字形, size, 大小, and line spacing, 行距, right? The, it's 2.0, 两倍行距. This is Microsoft Word. You want Times New Roman. This is not the default font. 这个不是预设字体, uh, Microsoft Word, the default font is called Calibri. You need to change it into Times New Roman. The size, 12. This is not the default size. The default size is 11. You need to change it to 12. And then finally, change the line spacing to 2.0. Okay, how do you do the hanging indentation? In so yeah, notice, right? Hanging indentation like this. In Google Docs, you have to fiddle with the ruler. But in Microsoft Word, there is a way to do this. Open up the paragraph menu. There are two ways. You can go to the top, click this arrow right here, or you can highlight what you want to change 
and right click 右鍵, and go to paragraph. In Chinese, this is 段落. Then it will open up this menu. You will need to go to here, special, 特殊. It will say none, 日色是五. Change it to hanging, 突牌. And then click OK. And it will change it into hanging indentation. OK, let's do some more practice. So this is the correct version. I'm now going to show you some incorrect versions. Please tell me what is wrong. What's wrong with this one? Guys, this is important. You have to be able to see what is wrong. Here. What's wrong with the name? You need to have spaces between the initials. If there's only one initial, that's fine. If there's more than one initial, you need to have spaces. Next, what's wrong with this one? Between each part of the citation, name, period, year, period. Title of the paper, period. Title of the journal, and then the journal information, period. And then after the end of the web address, no period. But after the year, after the parenthesis, please add a period. Next, what's wrong with this one? The article title, the title of this paper should use sentence cases. First word, and proper nouns are capitalized. Next, what's wrong with this one? Same thing, but in the subtitle, Fu Biao. Next, what's wrong with this one? The journal title should use capital letters for nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. Means the don't see foods, she won't see. She can be out here, does she? Next, what's wrong with this one? Good. This part, the comma and the volume number should be italicized. The comma also. I can tell the difference between a Roman comma and an italicized comma. It looks different. Next, what's wrong with this one? Good, page numbers. This is a hyphen. You want an N dash. Finally, what's wrong with this one? After the web address, do not add a period.
So these are some of the common mistakes that I see students making. Um, if you need to practice, go home, download the PowerPoint and practice noticing these mistakes. Quiz, please take out a piece of paper. Or your phone, I guess, but paper would be better. Ready? Okay, here we go. Please give me the correct citation. Um, if you're writing on physical paper, you can use underline instead of italics. 你用手写的话，写不出写体，你就画底线。I'll give you five minutes.
One more minute. Okay, let's check your answer. Are you ready? Please compare answers. Uh, check to see which parts you got right, which parts you got wrong. If your answer was Entirely correct. Please raise your hand. Excellent. One person. Although. Hopefully you're right. If you missed one part like the names or the year or the title, raise your hand. Good, good. You guys are paying attention. I like that. If you got only one part right, please raise your hand. Gotta focus, man. Gotta focus. Is it one so Jima? And if you got every part wrong, please raise your hand. Okay, so as you can see, it's not easy to remember. It's easy to explain, but it's e not easy to remember. So you do need to practice remembering each part of these answers. Now I want to I want to point out a few things. First of all, sometimes if you go to the journal page, the DOI will look a little bit different. Sometimes it will say uh, HTTPS colon slash slash DX dot DOI, etc. For those kinds of web address, please delete the DX dot part. Sometimes it will not give you a DOI link. It will say DOI colon numbers. Uh, in that case, you have to create a DOI link. You have to type the first part. And then one more thing. Some of you might have noticed this button, cite. This is an automatic citation generator. Most of the time, it is wrong. Sorry. In fact, if you go ask ChatGPT, if you like copy the entire website and paste it into ChatGPT and you ask it, please turn this into an APA 7th citation, it will be wrong. It will be close, but it will still be wrong. You can only depend on yourself and me. So if you try to take a shortcut, it will often not work in your favor. You have to know what you're doing. OK, let's stop here this week. Uh, if you have questions about this or about your midterm exam or any other questions, please come see me. Um, next week, we will finish this presentation. There are 10 more pages, and then we will practice like this uh, for different kinds of material, how to write the correct citation style.